In this session, we are going to have an overview of how do we choose the right uh, data model for business application or in short, when we have uh, so many databases available in the marketplace, uh, so many vendors, uh, so many service providers for the database, how do we select the best database for our business application? So that's the agenda for today and uh, we are going to start with the challenges which model we, we select. So, so the the data set which we are going to select, it depends largely on the, the volume which is coming from the heterogeneous data. So nowadays the business applications are designed in such a way that they can get the data from heterogeneous uh, uh, way. It is not just one source of uh, getting the data. And uh, the way you uh, select your data set, it also depends upon what kind of workload it is going to have in near future or in coming days. Or uh, what is the usage pattern of those, uh, those data. And the, the most important part is uh, how, the, how do you structure the data and what kind of operations uh, that uh, uh, structured or non-structured data is going to support. And uh, in, in very simple way, we can say that a single data store is not usually the best approach. So not one solution best fit for, for our requirement. Uh, we do have different types of uh, data in different data stores. That is what we can say. We, we do have polygot persistent, uh, wherein we say that a mix of data, data store can be used. And a, nowadays what is happening is a single database system which is coming, uh, they, they say we support multi-model support. So in short, they do sub, uh, support the table view as well, wherein you can structure your uh, data in table format or you can put it in the key value pair or graph storage. So whatever you do, or um, the, your first and foremost important part is how do you take the decision like which database model has to be chosen. We are starting with the RDBMS database, the first, uh, the foremost, and uh, the one uh, which started with the, so when we say the relational databases, the uh, the tables, uh, they, they, they are all about the tables, the row and the columns, and we use SQL queries to, to retrieve and manage the data. And the most important part of RDBMS databases, they are as said in nature. That means they are atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable. So data structure, you have to define ahead of the time uh, so that uh, you can uh, you can write the queries, so you can use the schema as well, which is defined ahead of the time. The consistency is the uh, utmost thing which is, which is required the changes which you do, they are atomic in nature. And always whenever the transaction is performed, it, it uh, leaves the data in a consistent state. The problem with the RDBMS system nowadays when the data is growing like anything, it is going beyond your imagination. You cannot uh, scale it uh, in the uh, vertically, so there is a roof where you are going to hit. So what you have to do is you have to uh, think uh, something out of the box where in where in the data can expand uh, horizontally in in terms of the shards. So what kind of workload does RDBMS system support? They support uh, the records or the rows which are very frequently, they are created and uh, updated. They are multiple operations which can be completed in a single transaction. And the foremost and the most important part is the relationships which are enforced using the database constraints. And you can use the indexes and uh, uh, different types of indexes to optimize your query performance. What kind of data type it has? So database schemas are required in, in force. That means you have to define your, your table structure ahead of the time and you have to maintain the relationship between uh, different tables in terms of the, uh, the keys. And the constraints are defined in the schema and they are, they are imposed on the data in the database. Uh, the data requires to be highly integrated uh, you you put the index and uh, data requires a strong consistency. So when it is always a strong consistency, it is atomic and it is durable, then you always think about 
the relational database and database uh, when we talk about the relational database they are highly normalized and it is mainly used for uh, for and uh, th there is no such uh, limit where it can be used so you have the inventory management you have order management reporting accounting everywhere uh, relational databases are used now moving on to the new concept uh, not new as of now but this is something which came which is no sql uh, that's key value store uh, what happens in this you do not define the structure of the table ahead of the time the the uh, uh, the structure of the table is not defined uh, it is fluid in nature you can uh, you can store the data the way you you want it and it supports the query insert and uh, delete operations if you have to modify a value if you wanted to do it completely or or partially and uh, the application has to override the existing data and key value stores are highly optimized wherein you are performing simple lookups and it is uh, uh, less suitable if you need to query data across uh, different key or value stores it can be extremely scalable so that, that that's the most important part uh, scalability is is uh, not a limit as compared to the rdbms and you can different um, store your uh, data across different shards the most important part of the key value uh, databases is workload the, the database exists using a single key like a dictionary and it, ha it will have a value there is no concept of joins locks or union you cannot do that uh, you, you do not have the aggregation uh, secondary indexes are not uh, not used and uh, every key in a key uh, value database that is associated with uh, uh, one value there is no uh, structure rigidness so uh, you can say there is no schema there is no relationship between the uh, entities and uh, where it is used so it is used in uh, user preference and profile management uh, session management where you have to cache the data product recommendation uh, like that you can use it document databases the most important one uh, in uh, modern databases a document uh, a database consists of something called as document uh, why it is named as the document database so it has two things one is the field and uh, the other is the data it can be uh, it can store the value in the simple format or it can have the value in the form of nested format documents are, are retrieved uh, using uh, the apis or the application it is like a document contains the data for single entity right uh, you can have a customer uh, with an order and order may have some details and uh, multiple documents inside a collection uh, they don't need to have the same structure you store different database uh, different data in 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 the same uh, document so what kind of uh, workload uh, document databases like cosmos db uh, support so it offers the insert and update operations are very very common no object uh, relational resistance uh, mismatches there documents can better match the uh, object structure and uh, individual uh, documents you can retrieve you can uh, put the index in uh, on the multiple fields uh, they are normally non uh, uh, denormalized they do not uh, they are very small in size that's what it is recommended and each document can have its own schemas so that you do not need to define the structure of uh, of the schema ahead of the time it can have the optional field as well data structure can be semi-structured or non-structured I mean whatever you want you can put it uh, it is like product catalog uh, you can have a number of products and each product may have uh, its own own details inside it you can use it for content management and inventory management the next one in this series is the graph databases graph database consists of two things one is the nodes and edges you can see uh, a kind of example where in uh, uh, what do you see the uh, the kind of the relationship it has uh, it is uh, 
uh, one entity is going to other and uh, then fetching the information. So if you do it in a normal uh, RDBMS database, it's, it's very difficult to do it. It leads to the uh, degradation of the SQL query. So what do we define here in this case is you need to have the graph database. They support this kind of operation. They do have the concept of nodes and the edges. And it is mainly good when you have complex relationship between data items. They are very uh, dynamic in nature and they change over the time and uh, they uh, so nodes and the relationship it is that uh, the, the one at the top it, it's, it's a node and uh, it has to be related with the, the, the entities which are available and uh, it is like the the rows or, or the JSON document so if you talk about the organizational chart like uh, one person reporting the other and then uh, the the reportee is uh, getting reported by multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, employees and uh, then belonging to a different hierarchy so such kind of uh, things they you can store in in graph databases now this is very important the column family databases they organize the data into row and columns but they are not the rdbms it is a denormalized approach to uh, to structure the database in, in a particular column and uh, you can see uh, you have two columns one is customer id another is customer family so you can put the related data in, in the customer family uh, first name last name or you can add uh, email id address etc so in this case you used uh, uh, column uh, databases and uh, the most important part of uh, the column uh, databases, they uh, uh, they perform the write up uh, operations very quickly, update and uh, delete operations are, are very rare and uh, they provide high throughput, low latency and data is stored in the form of tables, key columns and uh, so whatever you have the related data, you can put it in one column. That, that's why it is, it, is, it is very, very fast. So some of the example of column-based databases are Bigtable, Cassandra, HBase, and Vertica. And that, that's, that's all a basic overview of how do we, do we select the, uh, the different uh, models of the database in, in, uh, and, uh, and how do we start, like which database you should use. I hope it's going to help and uh, thanks for watching.